Hi everyone. So in a previous video I showed you guys the ballistic tests that I conducted on HDPE plates. Now I'm going to show you guys how to build them. It's very simple and pretty straightforward. I made this crude wooden mold. It's 5x5, five five, a few inches deep because I didn't know exactly the thickness I wanted for my plates initially. But I ended up just going with a half a pound of chopped up milk jugs, which roughly came out to about five milk jugs per plate. And I made up a bunch of different ones, some of them with nylon paracord, which I'll go over this in this video. It didn't work as well as I had hoped it would. So I went a different direction with wrapping the fabric. And that's something else we're going to go over, which is the simple lamination that I did with these. Um, the resin I used was quite literally like the cheapest resin you can find either at a hardware store or even online. It's this Bondo polyester resin. This stuff is, you know, I mean, it's only really used for small repairs and simple lamination and stuff like that. As most polyester resins are, you know, when, when you want strength, you're usually going up to like an epoxy resin because that structurally is a lot stronger and makes a better plastic in general. And you could use some of that. I do have some of this AdTech nanotube resin, which I was saving for a ballistic uh, face mask that I'm currently designing and planning on building really soon. But if you're going real simple, that resin by itself is, I think, right around 12 bucks. And I even used the cheapest fiberglass. I didn't use any of my nicer rolled fiberglass that I order online. I just picked up a small pack of, uh, it's like folded up. It is, it's not chopped mat, it is actual uh, fabric, because there is a difference between those two. Chopped mat is usually for building up body, whereas fiberglass uh, fabric, or just in general, any type of fabric, is gives more structural support. So that's the difference between the two. If you're just trying to build up off of something, you'd use chopped mat. Whereas if you want to actually get the high tensile strength and stuff, you'd use fabric. So anyways, it's a very simple, straightforward. Uh, I got a cookie sheet, put out wax paper, put in about a half a pound, melted it down, pressed it in the mold with clamps. And then I wrapped it with laminate or with fabric and resin. So I'm going to show you guys these steps in order, maybe do a little bit of voiceover, but for the most part it's simple. Um, I don't have any other ballistic tests that I've conducted on these, it's just on my previous video. If you've seen it yet, then you already know what I'm referring to. If not, you could go check that out on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Thank you. Alright, so now on to molding the plates. As you can see here, I chopped up about five milk jugs and just take a pair of shears or a sharp blade and you can cut it up. Here's some clips of uh, a failed attempt of mine where I tried to impregnate uh, nylon paracord into it. And it seemed from the earlier test to indicate that it would be tougher as far as resisting breakage. But I had no idea that uh, HTPE was so ductile in the fact that it doesn't break into like little pieces more it absorbs energy and kind of stretches when it's impacted so when you're melting it down as you can see here it gets transparent and what I do is I just lay it out and I start folding it up using the wax paper and a glove and over time it'll cool down a bit and turn back to that white color so I put it back in get it back to melted point and then start rolling it out, folding it up until I get it right around the shape of my mold anyways. And as far as the temperature is concerned, you're going to want to melt it right around 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. That seems to be the best working temperature I've found and it makes it very simple. It has also the consistency of like chewed bubble gum is a good way to describe it. Very sticky, very tacky. Now when it comes to mold prepping, I found that adding some Vaseline to it really helps at reducing the plastics grab onto the wood. And I've also found that using wax paper, like I'm showing you here, uh, it, it just won't stick to that. So that's generally what I do with the mold too, is I add a little bit of Vaseline on the wood and then I stick 
the wax paper to that and it seemed to work out the best. Now, when you're molding it, you want to keep consistent pressure. So up here, I'm using a large clamp in the center to get it down to shape. And then I use the four C clamps on each corner to continually add pressure until it's got a nice, consistent um, resistance on it. And in about 15 minutes, I would apply a little bit more pressure. And then another 15 minutes, add a little bit more because HDPE shrinks when it's cooling. And that's just something you have to remember or else it'll buckle or have some ripples in it if you don't add consistent pressure to it. Now here's a clip of it just with no fiber in it. No uh, chopped up uh, ballistic nylon, or sorry, nylon paracord. And one thing that was truly amazing is how easy it is to cut. I have another clip right after this one showing how easy it is to cut with just a Stanley blade to trim off the little parts that squirted out. And after that, we're gonna get into laminating it. And when you laminate it, uh, you can sand it, which I'll show you in the next clip after this one. All right, so now we're going to try wrapping these in fabric. Um, one of them's going to be wrapped in nylon, uh, ballistic nylon, and the other one is going to be wrapped in fiberglass. The reason why I'm wrapping them rather than just trying to laminate on top, I do not think that the fabric's really going to hold this material. I'm going to sand down the edges and try to smooth it out. They are roughly four and like seven eighths inches, you know, full across and up, um, and about a quarter of an inch to right around a half an inch in thickness. Uh, each of them are right at a half a pound. And so um, we'll see how well wrapping works. I, I have a good feeling. I'm, I, I have tested uh, cutting and sanding it and it works pretty well with some just normal like general purpose grit. I'm just going to try to clean up the edges and do some crisscrossing across this so maybe the uh, resin will kind of hold on to the plate better so we don't have an immediate delamination which is what I kind of expect anyways even with the fabric around it. Um, the length of the fabric. I'm going to be doing them um, six inches, so that way we have a little bit to trim off, and probably about an eight foot strip of the fiber, uh, the fab fiberglass and the ballistic nylon. For wrapping it, like I said, normally you would be laying plies onto something or many other different methods. This is just gonna be a simple wet up because if this is an introduction to you for making your own stuff, this is a good place to start. So. I'm going to go and sand this up and we will see how it looks. Alright, so I didn't know what to expect when it came to laminating to HTPE because I had never done it before. So sanding it down and buffing out the edges definitely made the fabric cling to it a little bit better. However, upon investigating it after I shot it, I realized that it definitely delamined on both the front and the back. And it, had I just applied plies to the front and the back of it, it would have just it would have definitely busted the fib fiberglass right off of it. So I'm really glad that I ended up wrapping these fabrics around it, which is a different technique than what I've used in the past and was probably a little bit more difficult than just applying plies straight to it, but it definitely worked better than what it would have happened because of how quickly it delaminated. As you can see here, I, I roll out the fabric well, in this case, unfolded it from the little bag because this was the cheap fiberglass. Um, I just took a Sharpie and a square to trace out six inch strips that are five or four feet long, sorry. And it's really important to add a little bit of over, uh, a little bit over for each fabric piece that you cut because you're gonna wanna trim back and it's going to fray at the end. And the ways you can help reduce that is using good shears. Like what I'm using here is Kevlar shears. It cuts through the stuff extremely well and helps prevent it from fraying. But no matter what, the plate is going to fray unless it's already pre-coated like the nylon, uh, ballistic nylon that I had has urethane on the bottom and that did not fray at all. But invest in some good shears if you're getting into high-end fabrics like Kevlar and Xylon and Vectron, stuff like that, you're definitely going to want a good pair. And they're only like 30 bucks on Amazon. Just look up Kevlar shears. So I cut them, like I said, into four feet sections, gently folded them and set them to the side until I was ready to 
laminate the plate. And then I apply a small piece of tape to the plate itself and the fat fiberglass by wrapping it on one side so that way I could start laminating it by folding it and then pressing the resin down and keeping it really tight because I didn't want it to slip into um, pretty much loosen up and create air pockets and stuff because void spaces kill any composite that you're working on. You want to always minimize air pockets and a good way to do that is to press it or vacuum bag it of course. Uh, in this case obviously we're doing a very simple method that doesn't involve um, vacuum bagging but as you also that little piece of material that I'm working it over on compared to the wood behind it that is a a thick piece of fiberglass that I found at work and I ended up coating that with a silicone mold release and it works great for laminating on and I can clean it off easily I think it's like Asdell or Luon if you want to look those up oh, wait no Luon's uh, wood Asdell I think is the material and that I'm referring to that I'm laminating on right there I also have some pie crust sheets that I will be putting them in and placing them in my cure box. This is an un unnecessary step if it's warm enough where you live. However, when I first started this project, it was still quite cold out. And as I was working up these plates, temperature is very important to resin. Uh, and also knowing how long uh, time you have to work with. With this resin, with the 40 ounces of resin and the 40 drops of hardener that I used it took about I think 15 minutes to truly set up and really tack and at that point you just can't really move it around and work with it anymore so but yeah both plates I use 40 or 4 ounces of resin sorry and 8 uh, foot strips or well 2 4 foot strips of fabric the total weight of the fiberglass one was uh, 0.75 pounds so three-fourths of a pound and the nylon one was right underneath a pound because that nylon is considerably heavier than the fiberglass now as you can also see I'm wearing latex gloves luckily I'm in my garage and the garage door is open so remember that fumes when it comes to epoxy or any other type of thermal set resins can be very toxic and bad for you to breathe in so either wear a respirator or just do it in a very open space. I wasn't too concerned because this was a small amount that I was laminating at a time, being only four ounces. If it was a larger amount, I would have had my respirator on. So then I just place it into the sheet that I also applied some of that silicone mold release and set it up into the hot box to cure over. So. All right, so it's the next day. I let them cure overnight. This little cure box worked really well. Here's the fiberglass one. Here's the ballistic nylon. And uh, all in all, they turned out pretty well for, you know, for cheap polyester resin. Obviously, it's not the cleanest looking uh, resin job on the outside, especially where it was facing down. And you can see where my thumbprint was from when I placed it into the tray but all in all I mean you know if this was something that would be you know look pretty at the end so to speak I would sand it down and do top coats and stuff I also had a little too much access fabric on each side I should have really only done a half an inch so a total of quarter inch on each side I did an inch and whenever you have loose fabric like this it's always going to fray and you'll have to trim back so it's always good to do fabric a little bit bigger than the mold itself anyways the ballistic nylon did really well though um, I'm not gonna have to trim that back really because it didn't fray it was coated in that urethane coating so it's uh, pretty solid I mean it's uh, I think that this will probably do the best. It's a little bit thicker than this final product and or product, and it's a little bit heavier 
because the nylon itself is a little bit heavier. But uh, let's uh, clean this one up and go out and shoot them and see how they do. I'm excited. All right, so I just wanted to clarify a few things. When I was making these plates, I used four ounces of resin, not 40 ounces, and four, 40 drops of hardener, because that's what that resin calls for. Different resins are obviously going to need different amount of hardener to cure a thermoset resin. Especially when, you know, epoxy is different than polyester, so on and so forth. But if you get the same resin that I used, that's pretty much the ratio you're looking at. Um, I had to add a little bit more resin to this plate in comparison to that one because this fabric didn't wet out as well. Um, and it was about two more ounces, so I made a total of six ounces of resin for it. Um, but they both worked great. I mean, the fiberglass, cheap fiberglass one stopped 14 shots. Uh, I have another video which details all the ballistic tests and how I uh, check for back face deformation. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and it goes over all that. I didn't want to make this video over a half an hour long with the build and the shoot. If that's what you guys would like to see, then I could always do that instead of splitting it into two parts. But I wanted to keep it simple and not feel too pressed for time sort of thing. So I think that they both turned out pretty good. Hopefully you guys agree. And if you do, like, share, and subscribe. And please leave a comment below if you want me to build something. You know, suggest any type of testing of fabric or resin or any other ideas on making uh, armor or any other gadget. I'll take a crack at it. So uh, uh, see you later and see you on the next video which will probably be this bulletproof mask that I'm currently working on. So stay tuned for that. Bye. Tech this out.